Tower for uh, allowing us to, to be here in this beautiful venue. As, as Bruce mentioned, uh, Shannon and I do own a winery. It doesn't look like this. <laughs> Our winery is a bit more what we call authentic. And in business parlance, that's a synonym for underfunded. <laughs> but we love it. It's very homey. Um, it is incredible to be standing in front of such a, uh, an, an amazing group of people. Uh, so you know, unlike uh, Alia, I am not an alumnus of the 40 Under 40. I've never had the honor of being uh, part of this group. Leesburg today began this wonderful event in 2013. And of course, one of the stipulations is you have to be under 40. I've been overqualified since the inception of the event. <laughs> <laughs> My wife, Shane, and I have been very fortunate to be recognized by the Loudoun business community uh, for our efforts in both of our businesses. In 2008, our winery, Nota Viva Vineyards, was awarded the Agricultural Small Business of the Year by the Loudoun Chamber. Last year, Mesh on the Media was awarded the Technology Small Business of the Year. And in 2012, I was awarded Loudoun's Entrepreneur of the Year. And it was an incredible night and a, an award that I hold very dear to this day. And it's really what I want to talk to you about tonight, is what I hope this event and this night will mean for all of you moving forward. In the days after the 2012 Small Business Awards, I found myself wondering, what's the point? Why would the Loudoun Chamber, why would Leesburg Today, Northern Virginia Media Services, decide to recognize the achievements of those people who have gone above and beyond the norm, those people that have really set themselves apart? What's the point? And from my perspective, I feel there are several reasons why organizations hold award ceremonies, starting with the obvious. I think we can all agree it feels pretty wonderful to be recognized for the hard work that you put in, and not just in the workplace, but in our communities and in, in, in our homes. You are the ones who put in 110%, stay late at work, over delivery. And more often than that, that takes sacrifice. So to your spouses and families, I would congratulate them as well. accept this award later, I want you to feel welcomed, and I want you to feel joyful, and I hope you will treasure this evening for the rest of your lives. But I believe there's a deeper reason that we come together to honor each other. And I think these events have the ability to inspire other people. You were the 40 who were chosen, but if you wondered how many others out there just barely missed the cut, this is Loudoun County, the greatest county in America. There's a lot of other talented people out there. Maybe you'll nominate some of them in the future. But the next time you see one of them and they congratulate you on your award, what are you going to say to them? What's the point of being here tonight? As I pondered that question, I began to feel a real sense of responsibility. It became clear to me that the point of this experience, well beyond tonight's applause, is to build on this momentum, to become an inspiration for those around you. When you accept your award tonight, I challenge you to recognize that this achievement bears a cost. I want you to accept the responsibility that you have become an inspiration to others in business, in your community, and in your home. And people you have never even met and probably never ever will meet now look up to you. That responsibility bears a cost. What does it mean to be inspiring in the workplace? How can you inspire those young professionals who are just beginning their careers? Think about some of your earliest jobs back in high school or college. Do you remember what you thought or felt about the leaders of those companies? Were they approaching the ripe old age of 40? No. You remember thinking, wow, that dude's old. <laughs> How did they treat you? Did they treat you with respect, with dignity, with words of encouragement? Or did they put you down? Did they treat you like dirt, never offering any guidance, any mentoring, or a kind word for a, a job well done? Think about those times and understand that you, we, we're now those people, and that is important. How can you inspire your peers? I think there's two ways. Lead by example and offer a helping hand. To me, the phrase lead by example does not mean practice what you preach. 
I believe it means practice hard and don't be preachy. I tell my team to focus on three tenets. Do the easy tasks perfectly. Do the hard tasks well. And do the impossible things as best you can. But try. Always give it your best. Offer a helping hand. If someone is struggling, just take a few minutes out of your day and offer some suggestions, even if you don't solve them. Two heads are better than one. Just the act of showing a colleague that you care can make all the difference in somebody else's day. Inspiring your supervisors. Have you ever even thought about that? What does that mean? Mark Zuckerberg, founder of Facebook, recently said, I will only hire someone to work directly for me if I would work for that person. Zuckerberg gets it, the employee-supervisor relationship. And you have to assume that your executives are thinking the same thing when they look at you. Would they consider working for you if the tables were turned? When I was 14, I was a freshman at Parkview High School. I was hired at the original Meadows Farms Nursery out on Route 7. It's now a car dealership. Some of y'all may remember that. I got the job because all my cousins had worked through Meadows, and it was kind of a rite of passage in our family. And working for minimum wage on the mulch pile and getting quarter tips, people pulling up in a Mercedes and saying, I want 30 bags of mulch, don't get any dirt in it. <laughs> okay, here's your quarter. <laughs> the first day I was introduced to Bill Meadows, known as Farmer, who went on to uh, found, I don't even know how many, I think 28 Meadows Farms and the, the, one of the finest golf courses in Virginia. I later learned on my first day, he pulled Eddie Carroll, my manager, inside and said, Ed, what are you going to do with that kid? He's so scrawny. <laughs> and Eddie replied, he's got a great attitude. He's friendly around customers, and he always hustles. And by the end of that first spring, they had given me a nickname, BW, stood for Boy Wonder. A few years later, when I was graduating high school, it was my last season at Meadows, Eddie told me, he said, you inspired me, Steve, to push the other guys harder. I figured if that scrawny kid could stand out there in the freezing rain and rake mulch and move white pines, then those other guys ought to be able to do it as well. Your supervisors are watching you. They're counting on you. Lift them up. Make them proud that you're on their team. One more notion I'd like to put forth regarding being inspirational in the workplace is this. Be fair. Be fair to your colleagues. Be fair to your customers. You want to deliver a great product, you want to deliver a superior service, and by all means, profit from your efforts. That's why we're in business. But always remember, your reputation and integrity are at stake in every transaction, both internal and external. Don't ever risk those for the sake of a few dollars. I imagine that being acknowledged tonight as one of the 40 under 40 will bring you some recognition in your community endeavors. Perhaps someone will bring it up on the sidelines at the kids' practice or at a Cub Scouts meeting. Maybe it'll be mentioned on Sunday at your place of worship or at dance class or piano lessons. Doesn't matter where. Regardless of where the subject comes up, you need to think of those moments as your opportunity to make a positive impact in someone else's life. You might hear the phrase, you're so lucky. We are lucky. Look at where we live. Greatest country on earth, greatest county in America. When I hear, you're so lucky, I would like to remind people of my favorite Thomas Jefferson quote. President Jefferson once said, the harder I work, the more luck I seem to have. When Shannon and I reflect on all the wonderful opportunities we've been presented with and know that we've been mesh on the media, so many of them can be traced back to a time when we raised our hand in the community and said, let us help, not asking for anything. Whether it was sponsoring a program, offering our professional services to a cause, or just getting involved in an organization, getting involved in the community has brought us an immense amount of joy. It's also brought us our share of hardships as well. And that's to be expected when you are passionate about your beliefs, unwavering in your convictions, and outspoken in the face of adversity. Those are the defining traits of true leaders. And if you were to ask me a thousand times if being involved in community matters was worth the headache it brought, I would say absolutely every single second of it. Be active in your community and stay visible. Help those less fortunate than yourselves. Ask for nothing in return. It doesn't matter if you're just coaching some kids, helping the elderly, serving on a commission. You need to get involved. And if you do these things, good fortune will find you in its own time and in its own way. But rest assured, while you're engaged, your efforts will be noticed. Your recognition will be far more modest than what you're receiving tonight. I 
I promise you it'll be just as meaningful. Be an inspiration at home. And that doesn't just mean the people you live with. It's extended family and your friends as well. Think of how proud your parents are of you tonight and how they will be, or would be, telling their friends about your achievement over the next days, months, and years. That's what old folks do, isn't it? <laughs> as Shirley of Each as Us is entering a new phase in life, right. approaching 40, they're going to be boasting to their friends about how beautiful you looked in your dress, or how handsome you looked in your suit, and what a great success you have become. They're so proud. And hopefully you're as lucky as I am to have longtime friends, people you've known since grade school, who have followed your career, they've cheered you through your successes, and they've picked you up in the face of adversity. I'm sure you get to spend time with them less and less as the years go by, but that only makes the time we spend together that much more precious. Take a selfie tonight, post it on social media, and let them share this moment with you. If you've been blessed to have children, regardless of their age, be sure to sit down with them tonight and explain to them, doing your best, working hard, always pays off in the end. Maybe you had to miss a school play to stay late for a client meeting. Maybe you had to miss a birthday party to go on a business trip. Make sure they understand how difficult those choices can be for us, but that they are just as much our inspiration as we are theirs. I'll never forget one afternoon, Shannon and our three boys were pulling away to attend a family function, and I had to stay and work the crush pad in the middle of the harvest. Tristan, who may have been six at the time, looked at Shannon and said, when I grow up, I'm going to be a big daddy, just like Pop. <laughs> Remember, no matter how out of balance life gets, no matter how many different directions you're getting pulled, they are always watching, learning, and loving. Don't let them down. gathered here tonight. What's the point? Think of tonight as a new beginning in your life, as you close this chapter. Tomorrow you will begin a new chapter, and I hope you will accept this new responsibility with which you have been entrusted. The eyes of your colleagues, your community, and your family are upon you. Be everything that they believe you can be. They are your inspiration, and you are theirs. That Oh,